and welcome to The Scramble. I'm Adrian LaFave. Today's show is, quite frankly, about some pretty disturbing things. We'll talk about the media coverage of an abortion doctor convicted of three counts of first-degree murder. We'll also discuss the IRS, everyone's favorite government agency, intentionally targeting conservative groups applying for tax-exempt status. Let's get started and meet my panel. We have with us today Mark Ciavola. He is a, I almost said it again, you're a junior, not a senior yet. Uh, in political science, and you are president of CSUN. Back with us is also Eric Leach. You are also a political science major, and you are a sophomore. Cassidy Blue, you are a bona fide senior yes, in journalism and media studies. Looking forward to graduation in December. And back with us today, for the second time, is Ryan Hamilton. You are a graduate student in news and media journalism and media studies. That's correct. Thank you all for being on the show, and let's jump right into it. Kermit Gosnell, an abortion doctor in Philadelphia, has been convicted of three counts of first-degree murder for the deaths of infants born alive after unsuccessful late-term abortions. He's also been convicted of involuntary manslaughter for the death of a woman who died in his care. Gosnell's trial began on March 18th, and court transcripts document the horrifying details of this case, including graphic testimony from some of Gosnell's own staff. Yet the media coverage of this trial has been at best, scarce. An article in USA Today said, quote, the deafening silence of too much of the media, once a force for justice in America, is a disgrace. Why, Brian, I'm gonna start with you on this one. Why is it that the media, uh, this is a, a very disturbing story, something that would be on the front page, as the article said, should be on the front page of every newspaper in America. Why isn't the media covering this? I mean, the answer is I, I don't know, but I, I don't necessarily agree with the article that it's, that it's something that has to be on the front page. I mean, I give wide discretion to editors to be able to choose what material goes on the front page. Uh, I mean, it would be nice to see coverage of this that's at least akin to the Arias trial, the Jody Arias right. trial, but that hasn't happened. Whether there's some nefarious ideological uh, conspiracy at play to keep uh, this bad news for abortion uh, proponents out of the news, I, I don't know. But, but uh, it, it doesn't seem to me to be uh, a huge issue that requires the news attention. I mean, we're talking about it. The USA Today talked about it. It's been on my Twitter feed, so it's not like it's totally blacked out. Just the major networks haven't covered it, and I think they're losing power uh, generally. Do you think it's because they're not covering certain aspects of, I mean, we're, we're journal some of us are journalism students here. That's the, what does the public need to know? What do they, you know, it's is this a need to know? The public wants to watch and they don't want to watch that. I mean, it's been covered. I mean, I've seen it on the news. I've seen it on CNN, Fox. I've seen it in the papers on uh, the but Huffington only most Post. Recently. I mean, yeah. only yeah. really most recently since the verdicts come out. But while the trial was going on, there was hide nor hair of it in any of these major I mean NBC didn't do even do a story on it until May 1st that's I mean, that's we, a, a considerable amount of time one case you know over a period of months when there's but at least gives, a lot give of some air time to on. it or some time I don't, some I don't time think to it's it. like I, mean, I think <clears throat> I, I definitely think that there has been a, a, a blackout of sorts I mean I, I can't tell I don't you think why, it's but. anything nefarious I just think it's not what the public wants to watch I mean if it was something the public was interested in it'd be on HLN with uh, Nancy Grace should be Plan should be going through the whole thing. I mean, the public just doesn't want to watch it. So they do the highlights in the news, and that's about it. I mean, I don't want to watch this play out over a course of months on my, on my TV. Well, I, I, I think that there's something. Just let me know what as, happens. As journalists, it. however, I think that, and uh, for you being a, a political man, I'm not sure, but we've all learned that there it doesn't matter what the public wants. When it comes to well, it seeking it and matter. right, it seeking and matter. reporting the truth, uh, this is I think all of us here, and, and we're, we're required to leave out some of the graphic details. This is a disturbing story, and I think anyone in the public that I've spoken with about this is appalled that it wasn't reported in well, while guess, it was happening. I, I, considering how big an issue of women's rights uh, were in this country, especially for the, you know, the 2012 election, and considering, you know, the, the war on women, I guess, if you will, and how, how the media heavily covered that, you, this, this definitely plays into the role of reproductive rights, and I would think that it could at least get, you know, maybe, maybe not equal coverage, because like you said, the people don't want to hear about it as much, but I mean, it could get some coverage. And, it you know, has gotten some coverage. Recently, it's gotten coverage, but the, the trial started March 18th. I mean, that's a considerable amount of time for no news outlets to report on this, and they weren't reporting on this until May. So, I mean, you have to, why? I mean, I mean it just... I mean, they're reporting on OJ, yeah. thinking that he right. got screwed out of a, a deal. Look. 
I, I mean, the problem here, and, and I'll say that unlike the war on women, this actually exists. And so the media's decision not to cover it is, of course, part of a greater narrative. It is what they choose to cover to fit their worldview, and this doesn't fit their worldview. Um, you know, this, this makes people stop and take a second look uh, at, at, at what's going on with, with some of these doctors and, and, you know, ask questions like, are there more, you know? Is this a, an isolated case? Nobody knows. But it, it definitely has been a blackout. Uh, we are talking about since March. Um, yes, it's been mentioned here and there, but I mean, with all due respect to Mr. Hamilton, his Twitter feed is not news, um, and and so you know it's about I didn't get that memo. It's about the <laughs> network, uh, the, the networks getting involved in, in in actually covering what's going on in this country. And, and look, it's very clear that they pick and choose what gets covered. You know, Benghazi wasn't covered until now. The IRS thing wasn't covered until now. This trial wasn't covered until now. You know, all of these things aren't covered until they're covered, but they're covered much too late when the pressure from the public and from Ryan's Twitter feed, you know, puts that pressure on the networks to actually give some of these stories attention. And, and you spoke about the war on women. I mean, I think that there are a lot of women out there that feel that, it took to, like you said, this is something that's real. Uh, this doctor has victimized not oh, yeah. just, um, obviously, the infants that unfortunately came out, um, but also women. And, and, and you would think that that would play into, is it really, like what, what Mark is saying, is it really such a blackout that doesn't... There, there's such a partisan nature to the country nowadays, and it's increasingly becoming more partisan, that I think that that has a lot to do with it, too. And I think that people who are pro-choice maybe m might not want to talk as much about this because it, it, it really brings in that whole gray area. But at the same time, people who are, are pro-life... Uh, you kind of have to take a step back and go, wait, if abortion was illegal, this kind of stuff would be happening. I mean, in exaggerated numbers, the way the back alley abortions were before it was legal. So I, I think that this definitely puts us, we should be talking more about it because it, it, it puts more of a perspective onto what kind of abortions we're really talking about in this country being legal, you know? Well, doesn't it expose, though, that, you know, as I think it was Hillary Clinton, Clinton and many other people that have said they want, you know, who, who ever thinks, yay, abortion, what a great thing. They want it to be safe, legal, and, well, and, then when they and I think this exposes think accessible to 12 year old girls without parental notification. Right, but this and 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 we can go down the whole but, list of how they're trying to expand uh, I think when access you say to safe, abortion. When you say safe, we're not just safe. We're not just talking about the women who are going in there for the abortions, but we're talking about those those babies we want who are safe I mean, for the well for the baby for the fetuses, well right? for the babies who come out a, a, alive and they are babies there's and they are living. You know, on I mean, every side. Yes, on the left, they're a little bit too. You know you know, loose with the rules. But on the right, I mean, they don't, the far right, they don't want women to be able to have an abortion in, the, in case of rape, incest, or the life of the mother. So I think, you know, there's two, two sides on two ends of it that are both wrong. And then there's also the middle ground. That We're going to have to take covered. a short break. On the other side of this break, you're going to have to tell us what you are about to say. This is a hot topic and it's very disturbing. Stay with us. We will be right back. Winston, just one more inning, Grandma. Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part, which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. is the color that your skin was meant to be no longer beautiful every year millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin sadly some actually do melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults and one person dies from melanoma every hour change your thinking not your skin stop tanning learn more at spotskincancer.org a message from the american academy of dermatology 
We're uh, talking today about uh, Kermit Gosnell, abortion doctor, who's been convicted of first-degree murder of three infants, three out of the four that he was charged with. Um, it's a disturbing story. Uh, Ryan, before the break, you were about to uh, share with us the implications that this may or may not, since it's not covered very much and it's not really motivating the public, have on policy. Well, there's a very clear policy uh, implication, I think, because there's a bill in Missouri right now, a statewide bill, I think it's in Missouri, it could be in another state, where they want to ensure that all doctors who perform abortions have affiliation with the hospital and that abortion clinics have the same kinds of health inspections that other clinics would have. And right now, that's not necessarily the case. And I think that a lot of the people who are pro-choice object to this by saying that this is just a backdoor way to limit abortions. But if Gosnell's case proves not to be isolated, and we don't know that it is, or we don't know that it isn't because a lot of times that information just isn't available, uh, but this kind, of, this kind of case proves that we do need more inspections. So I think that there needs to be some discussion of the case in reference to that. Additionally, I think Mark's point about age restrictions and other types of uh, what I would call reasonable limitations on abortion, this case has a lot of implications because if you're a 12-year-old girl and you walk into Kenneth Gosnell's clinic, you might not come back al alive or you might be traumatized or scarred, right? And the government's place, if nothing else, is to make sure that the clinics are safe for women, right? No, it, or should 12-year-old right. girls be allowed to go in if this is the state of the abortion industry in the United States or, or the abortion care in the United States? So I definitely think that there are relevant points to be discussed uh, Do you out think of the story. that there will be a, a you know, a those in the pro-choice um, movement, do you think that they will be open to discussing this policy? What is Certainly so wrong think, with being regulated in that in way? The pro-choice um, community, if you will, will be willing. It's the pro-abortion community that won't be willing. See, and, and, and what's the difference? There is, there's well, a huge difference. I can tell you, there is a huge difference, and I am I am the, one of the differences. <clears throat> I mean, I I agree that abortion should be legal, but at the same time, I mean. Moral, you have to leave morality out of it. And if I brought my own morality into it, then that would be a whole other thing. But you have to keep abortion legal because of the repercussions, because things like this would happen in so much more prevalency. And like he said, you need government regulation to, regu to regulate, to make sure that these abortion clinics, that they are safe for women. They are safe, you know, for the, for even if a child goes in, that, that they are safe. And so I think that the only way to do that is to keep abortion legal. And, and I think added regulation isn't going to be as hard as to tack on because if you think about it, the, you know, the hard, you know, the hard left that supports, you know, unlimited access to abortion is a small, small minority. Most of the country is pro-choice, but we're not, you know, most of the country isn't, it's not. It's qualifiedly uh, pro-choice, I would say. Yeah. Not just open well, to yeah. any abortion Anybody at any time. Most, most people, I personally, I'm, most reasonable I don't people are going to be. But policies seem to support disgusted the fact that by this. This is all. I mean, we, during the break, we were talking about is 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 part of the difference between pro-choice people and pro-choice uh, pro-choice and pro-abortion people uh, that some are part levels. of the industry. Well, right. I mean, Planned Parenthood is is a hundred million dollar a year organization. They make money. They charge for abortions. They receive government subsidies, which they claim goes to. Uh, non-abortion. Right, right. which must be Upwards 5 of, to 10 percent of their clientele, right, essentially, right. or uh, the occasional uh, women's health screening or STD screening. I wouldn't say that they're so occasional. I mean, let's not brush it off like that. I'm not denying, I'm right. not denying the fact that maybe federal funding, I mean, I'm not saying that. They a third of but all they, abortions in the country. But they're busy they do people. a considerable amount yeah. of health, provide health care for women who do, cannot afford it and who don't have it. So, I mean, to say that they're very minimal is, I think, uh, wrong, a I'm, fallacy. I missed what you just said. They perform a third of all abortions in this country. They're very busy people. <laughs> so there is, I mean, I think, do you think this can facilitate? I mean, all of us sitting here, regardless of what our personal stance may be on this issue, I think that there seems to be a consensus that there needs to be some policies uh, that are brought to light by this issue. Um, what can be done in that way? And, and what role does the media uh, play in informing us? Well, I think the media has to give facts. Uh, I don't think that there's going to be very much progress or discussion progress towards a goal out of, out of this Gosnell case by the fact that people don't even want to talk about it. That's true. Uh, but I do think that there. We there's, have to take another short okay. break. I'm sorry. We will finish our comments on the right. side of the, on the other side of this break. Stay with us. We will be right back. Think you found every hazard out here today? Think again. The spot you missed could be a killer. That spot on your skin could be skin cancer. Fact is, if you're a man over 50, 
you're in a group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the kind that kills one person every hour. One in five Americans is likely to develop a form of skin cancer during their lifetime. That's why your best shot is to check for a spot. It's easy. Follow through and check your skin. It could be the save of a lifetime. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out how. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part. New research tells us that just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. Uh, before the break, we were talking a little bit about, you know, the media in this, and, and it's, and it's uh, informing all of us, and what impact that may or may not have on policy. You had a, a point that you were going to well, I'm just saying that there's not likely to be any discussion towards a consensus as long as abortion advocates feel like the end goal of anti-abortion advocates is to eliminate it from the society. In that case, they're just, they're just going to the wall on every argument, right? Every argument has to be about keeping abortion legal. But if they can get to the point where they're comfortable that it is going to be legal, but reasonable restrictions have to apply, then we can have some kind of discussion. That some of the that regulations that they are seeking right. could actually help, okay. That, that might protect the people that they want to protect anyway. We are gonna have to move on. We will certainly follow up on this and see what kind of implications are, are, are coming on down the pike from this one. Um, let's move on to the IRS. Recent disclosures of the IRS searched for and singled out conservative groups applying for the 501c4 tax exemption exemption has outraged lawmakers on both sides of the aisle. Initial reports indicated that low-level employees had violated the IRS's own protocol, and this was just a rogue office in Ohio. However, it didn't take long for information to come out that this practice was far more widespread uh, than first thought, and that high-ranking officials in Washington, D.C. knew about this and lied about knowingly targeting these conservative groups. The IRS uh, director, Steve Miller, has quickly resigned. His position and a criminal investigation has been launched. So, is the problem fixed? What should I, be I, done? This I wasn't just a no, no. this wasn't just the a small field office fixed, in Ohio. Either. By the way, I didn't get the it memo. Was? No, it was not. It's the head of all nonprofit and corporation in the United States, which just right. happens to be in Cleveland, not in Washington D.C. So right. it's not like a rogue field office. It's the head of nonprofit. And well, that was one report, though. They actually called right. it. Someone in in the agency called it a rogue office. Right. But that's just more cover. that there were. It's I think they covering. specified two employees. Two rogue employees mm -hmm. had 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 done this, but it, it, you're absolutely right. right. This is a much office. bigger, de much bigger deal. No, Go ahead. I, I don't. I think it's fixed now, right? I mean, the guy resigned. Mark. I mean, he was only two weeks away from being done anyway. But but he resigned, so he's gone. I, my, the president my... says this was an outrage. I have to believe him. He's never lied to me before, and. Uh, I didn't get the memo, though, that you were trying to get picked up by Fox News, covering the IRS, the Cosmo thing. I know. Is, we are going to go this is, down this in is flames. Groundbreaking. I um, feel like I've been targeted by the IRS the day I started working since look, then. I mean, if there's, if there's ever been Are a, you being serious? Well, I mean, they tax me every month, <laughs> twice. They text you? Tax. Oh, tax. I was like, man, you're texting me. <laughs> yeah. Look, if there's ever been an argument for ending the IRS, this is it. Um, you know, taxes in America should be simple. Um, you know, somebody, I forget who... I, I wish I could remember, honestly, said that, you know, this is, I think it was Axelrod, maybe, who said this, uh, who said that the problem is that the government's too big. I mean, there's just so much going on. It's, you know, and, and finally, I'm like, we agree on something, you know. Um, I, I think this is outrageous. I think that the president is, uh, should take responsibility for this. There's no doubt about that. Um, I don't think that this is resolved. I think that there needs to be a special prosecutor. I think there needs to be a full-blown investigation to get to the bottom of why our nation's, uh, you know, tax arm is targeting specific people for political purposes. And until that happens, I think we should all be concerned. Eric, you've been kind of quiet here. I mean, I, th in. I think it's <clears throat> I think it's an outrage, of course, but I I don't think that we need to go through all this hoopla that we're going hoopla? through. Hoopla? Yeah, like yes, it's it's a uh, it's they shouldn't have been doing it, but I don't think there's a need for a special prosecutor. I think the DOJ can handle it themselves. Eric Holder, um, yeah, yeah. he handles a lot of things quite well. 
No, I'm saying uh, there's no need every time there is some kind of uh, scandal or issue to appoint a special prosecutor every time. What's why? This, this is, is a big deal. Cassidy, Cassidy, this is a pretty big, deal, pretty, is a pretty big, big deal. deal to target. And I, I mean, you guys know me; I'm infamous for being a liberal. But this is a big deal to target so specific. Kind of well, to target specific <laughs> political groups and deny them. I mean, you know. Nonprofit status deny them what will allow them to keep their group running is is just wrong and it it stifles democracy in in you know exasperating we're ways. We're gonna have to take a break yeah, on I, that. I, I, I'm frightening, stifling, I'm not you stifling all. democracy. I think we're gonna have to come back on that note because I think this is much bigger implications than we reckon. Hoopla. We'll be right back. Stay with us. She passed away about six months ago. Sure. Yeah, they missed their mom. It was hard to learn that there was no cure. You know, you don't want to see somebody that you love suffer. So we sought hospice care. The hospice people made her feel comfortable and pain-free. At first, the girls didn't know what was going on. They, uh, the girls knew that mommy was sick, that mommy wasn't feeling well, but they didn't know that mommy was that mommy was gonna die. I don't have, always have the answers, the best answers to the questions that they're gonna ask about what's going on. And uh, often the hospice people would, would be there. And they helped, you know, they helped me and the girls through just an incredibly hard time. is the color that your skin was meant to be, no longer beautiful. Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults, and one person dies from melanoma every hour. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. We are in the middle of a passionate discussion on the IRS. Who knew they could be so exciting? Uh, we're talking about the fact that they have targeted conservative groups intentionally. And they've lied about it. It's a little bit of a scandal. The, the director has resigned, I believe, um, at the suggestion of the uh, Secretary of the Treasury. Was that it? Um, disturbing, for sure. And, and I want to bring up an, another uh, level of this. This is the agency that is going to be in control of uh, health care for all Americans, who qualifies, what health care plan, plans qualify, if your health care plan qualifies. Um, what is the implication here when you, when, you know, the, the problem has been fixed, they're going to weed it out, there's a criminal investigation, but the fact of the matter is, this is, this goes a little bit deeper than uh, mere hoopla. I'll let you, I'll let you go first. Oh, I, I, of course it is. I mean, not only did they, did they target conservative groups, they targeted media, they targeted affiliate journalists, uh, major network hosts, they targeted bloggers, print writers, and they released conservative groups to opposition media. They released their tax records to opposition media. So if we're going to be talking about people's health care records, if you get someone like John McCain, who's an older man running for the presidency of the United States, his health care records are now in the hands of the IRS that could pose a problem that they hold the, the medical records of anyone who's going to run for political office, right? That might be leaked to opposition groups. So I think it, it, this demonstrates the huge problem when you just say, oh, the government's going to do it right. We can trust the government. Can't trust the government. They've never been able to do anything right. Pretty much the only thing they can prosecute well is warfare. And that's not the organization that I want to run my health care, that I want to run the schools or anything like that. So we need to t seriously take a, a step back and look at whether or not this is the government that we want for the future. And I would agree with you, it's not mere hoopla. My imagination is Eric feels kind of silly for that remark at this point. But. It is the wrong choice of words. I mean, <laughs> I it's think a great word, agencies though. Agencies definitely need more oversight, but at the end of the day. Oversight. Oversight, yeah. But at the end of the day, there's always going to be employees in every branch of government, in every, in every private sector that, um, <clears throat> that violates the rules. I mean, that's, it's human nature. We, 
I, I expect that it's going to be violated, but my hope is that the safeguards in those agencies will catch those violators and will prosecute them, which in this case is, is starting to happen. You know, I mean, Bloomberg, their own employees were spying on um, CEOs and journalists and uh, investors. So, I mean, this isn't isolated just to the government. So who's to say at a private company they're not going to release those same records anyway? Oh, yeah, but Bloomberg is in the... The problem is, is that when you have the same government that's benefiting from their actions doing the investigation, you can't really expect much to come out of that. That's why you need a special prosecutor. You know, if it turns out that every IRS employee in that Cleveland office donated to Obama in the last presidential campaign, which I believe it did come out today, um, then you have an issue, Eric, and you can't just say hoopla, we'll worry about it later, or... You know, I expect them to be investigated. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying the, that. I'm the, saying it's wrong and the, it should be the, investigated and they should be prosecuted. But it can't be investigated by the guy they donated money to in the last presidential campaign. You're assuming they're all coordinating. We, you have, yeah, they uh, couldn't yeah. possibly be coordinating. I'm pretty sure they've admitted as much at this point by the man resigning. You know, I mean, this that's is, the, this is ridiculous. The no, and I want to know if he's getting a retirement package that we're going to have to pay for now. I mean, this is, this is ludicrous. And anybody who thinks this is just, well, you know, things happen, so... You know, we'll just move this past it. This is certainly an saying. unfolding drama. Obscene. Gentlemen, gentlemen, we have to take another short break. Stay with us. We will be right back. Winston, just one more inning, Grandma. Ever notice how many things today kids can do without actually moving? A whole lot of things their parents used to do the hard way. So many kids' activities today seem to leave out the activity part which makes exercise even more important for children. In fact, new research tells us the best time to enhance bone development is during childhood and adolescence. And just getting children to walk an extra 35 minutes a day could spare them the pain of thinning bones later in life. Healthy bones come from healthy habits. Encourage your kids to get up, get out, and get moving. Hello. Hey, Grandma, how about another grape soda? A public service message on building strong bones for kids from the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America and the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons. At what age is the color that your skin was meant to be no longer beautiful? Every year, millions of young women try to change the skin they were born with and say they die for darker skin. Sadly, some actually do. Melanoma is the second most common cancer in teens and young adults, and one person dies from melanoma every hour. Change your thinking, not your skin. Stop tanning. Learn more at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Welcome, to get welcome back from the break. I'm going to, since you, you're in the middle of talking, uh, I'll go ahead and give sorry. you the, la the last word on this one. We've just got uh, a little bit of time left. If I were trying to get something out of the IRS in a way that uh, they did not approve of, I'd be going to jail. So the reverse should absolutely be true for the IRS. Yes. They should so have the same stake, oh, unquestionably, yes. the same stake in it that they, they routinely put people in jail uh, for not paying their taxes. So this is going to go down. We definitely will continue to follow this one, um, stay on these unfolding dramas. But now you know what we think. Let us know what you think. Share with us your ideas, uh, opinions. Um, topics, email us at thescramble.unlv, I'm sorry, yes, thescramble.unlv.gmail.com, and you can also catch episodes of The Scramble, uh, full episodes, at UNLV, unlvtv.edu. Next week will be more about the federal government, the Associated Press, and uh, Benghazi. So we hope uh, you will join us next time. For everyone here at The Scramble, thanks for joining us, and we see you again next time.